Three days for the Celtics and Heat. Celtics jumped out to a 30-8 to lead and held on to beat Miami by five on Monday night. And there are the raw numbers in terms of what's at stake tonight. Uh, Boston is 8-6 and six since that legendary flight out west that supposedly corrected everything, right? But they've been slightly above 500 since that time. How, how do you feel about them now a week before the end of the regular season? Did you happen to get that flight number in case we decide we want to get on a, a similar flight? Straighten everything No, out. no, I don't have that. Well, Brad Stevens now has, has made uh, the statement that he's going to his big lineup, one that he used very well last year. So Baines is back in there, moves Horford over to the power forward position. He's so skilled uh, for a big man. Uh, but that's the first thing you had to deal with. And now rotations is the next thing. And trying to get guys... Uh, the adequate number of shots. It seems like Haywood is playing a little bit better right now. And maybe the Celtics are getting it together at exactly the right time after having an up-and-down season up to this point. Yeah, I, th I think part of it is you keep hearing about the Celtics looking back to last season and, and what worked for them a year ago. When Let's be honest, they were not the full-strength Celtics we thought they'd be with Kyrie and Gordon Haywood. But so much of what they did right and effectively was done without those two guys. So now you're always trying to unlock, Coach, the things that worked for you when you weren't at full strength, when you didn't have all these guys. And I think, to me, that's, that's a strange way of them saying, hey, we're going to flip the switch come playoff time by trying to do the same things we did a year ago with a formula that worked but with different elements. Mm. That's a tricky proposition come playoff time. And we're going to find out if they're as good as they think they are to be able to do something like that, and if you're as accomplished a group as you think you are trying to do something like that. That is playing with fire for certain. Uh, Al Horford had his second career triple-double on Monday night in a win over Miami. And you could make a pretty good argument for Al as the C's MVP this season. You'd have net rating on your side. Horford has been by far Boston's best net which means his plus minus per 100 possessions. It's plus 7.3 since the All-Star break. Maybe more telling, the Celtics are a minus 12.8 per 100 possessions when Al is off the floor. Why, uh, why does it all work better with Al in the game, Coach? Because Al Horford is a multi-skilled player. He has the ability to score, but they were ready for Miami's defense. They knew they were going to play some zone, so they put Horford on that elbow hit the center, the heart of the defense, he turns and looks opposite. Again, around the foul line area, when he turns, right, freezes out of bio, he's got a guy who sneaks behind him on the baseline, he makes the right pass. But at the same time, because he is so skilled, he has the ability to run the floor and throw it up above the rim, he'll go find it and finish it. And then if he takes a rebound off himself, he's not afraid to bring it down, lead the break, he sees the entire floor, if you run hard, you may be rewarded. Or if he sees an alley, quick crossover, he goes and finishes at the rim. So you see say the other night that he is substantive, not sexy. And that kind of sums up Al Horford's game. He's been an all-star, but he's not hunting numbers. And every NBA team would love to have him in their locker room. His basketball IQ has been off the charts since the time he stepped into the league. Uh, he's only ever known success. Always been in the playoffs from the, you know, from his rookie year all the way on everywhere he's been. And he's the anchor of this team, coach, in ways that I don't think jump out at people enough for them to comprehend how important it is to have an anchor player who's this smart, who's always making the right play, who's always covering for his teammates, and is not interested one iota in, in the glory that comes with it. So you have a guy, to me, who becomes a selfless team leader a guy who leads by example, and when you don't have him in the mix, as we've noticed, the Celtics have not been the same type of team. So his positive attributes are shining through right now, and they're going to need him every minute going forward. You know, all that has been true, and yet so much of this season has been about trying to accurately measure Kyrie Irving's temperature, right, and where he stands with the team and where they stand around him. He had 25 on Monday. His averages and his usage have both ticked up here since the uh, the All-Star break, but his percentages and his ratings have actually come down a little bit. Where, where do you, where, How do you feel, I should say, about where Kyrie is at right now as the postseason approaches? I think what you care about is, is Kyrie healthy as we enter the playoff picture. And 
whatever they've been doing and monitoring or managing his minutes along the way, we understand that this is one of the best scorers in the NBA. And as part of the problem that Brad Stevens has had to deal with, bringing him back into the lineup when last year they played with Rozier at that spot. And mm -hmm. the chemistry, the energy was all so good last year and going to seven games. Well, now you bring him back an all-star, an all-NBA player, uh, along with another all-star, and two of them are rejoining this group. So some things have to go down automatically just by the fact that these two guys are playing now and going to use minutes up and shots up. He's awfully handy to have at the end of a playoff game. I know that much. Whatever his temperature is right now, that is a certainty. All right, we'll